lot of problems when it comes to gender inequality is the media. Like, they're, they're exploiting women and girls in ways that make them think, oh, I want to be like that, I should look like that. My daughter, who's 13 years old, yeah. is constantly exposed to misogynistic bullshit day in, day out, and not just from men, but from women. Women who run magazines for women are trying to teach my daughter that what she is and what she looks like is or isn't wrong. That's what she's exposed to, and that's what we try and protect her from. I believe strongly that the music videos that people watch these days have a great effect on, on the boys' attitudes to the girls and also the girls' attitudes to themselves. When you see this stop sign on a woman's bottom and she does a little north face, that is kind of suggesting that to push the boundaries of consent is sort of fun and yeah, it's a little bit naughty and you shouldn't really do it, but it's okay really. And there isn't that much talk about how serious it is that someone is basically making sexual assault and rape sound a bit fun and something that you can just sing about in a pop video and making that quite attractive. Quite a lot of time we view uh, music videos um, and see a lot of stuff on the internet and in magazines in which women are just behaving in firstly a, a very sexualized way and that's all they're doing. All they're doing in music videos is dancing in a certain way, wearing certain clothes, which not only is, is just pretty narrow, um, but it's also incorrect. Women don't normally behave like that. persona that boys get dragged into I think from watching things like music videos that whole sort of swaggering thing the bossing of girls around telling them to do stuff Men are told things like man up, be tough, be strong. Um, the, the best thing you can do is kind of show how hard you are and, and, and not uh, show emotion, not be scared, um, not be open and honest actually. Um, and this can manifest in loads of ways. It, it's not just violence, um, but, but violence is one of the kind of products of that, that that we look at. Today there is this link between masculinity and violence and masculinity and uh, not expressing your emotions. And uh, these things are ultimately very damaging and uh, very counterproductive um, to uh, not just men but uh, to society at large. I was quite a hate this word, but tomboy when I was younger. You know, I, I, I kind of rejected the idea of being really girly. And I, um, and I really, in a sense, I, I always felt like I wanted to be a boy, which I think was quite sad. Um, because I just thought that um, masculinity, which was linked to maleness, was much more favorable. Um, Obviously now I, I don't think that, but in the past I always did because I just felt like I wanted to be really strong. And I felt like women weren't strong because we weren't represented as being very strong. I just wonder if her dad did say to her when she was 12, 13, 14 maybe, listen, you are never going to be you know, a looker, you are never going to be somebody like a Sharapova. You are going to have to be the most dogged, determined fighter that anyone has ever seen on the tennis court. When we're exposed to so many images uh, of women that are just in a purely sexualized form, does that mean that we are raising a generation of people to when they see a woman or see a young girl or see their, their fellow pupils in school, they're assuming certain things about her behavior, um, which is completely incorrect. Um, because there's that broader thing, those implied values as well, that an incorrect view of, of gender and masculinity um, really can have an impact on. Men are more likely than women um, to act in certain ways, statistically. Um, so this can include being violent towards others, um, 
using uh, drugs and alcohol un unsafely, uh, go ending up in prison. 94% of the current UK prison population is male, which I think is quite worrying. I remember when I got followed, when I recounted my experiences of that, a lot of people told me, well, why were you out at eight o'clock by yourself at night? And I was like, well, you know, my brother was allowed by himself at eight o'clock at night in the Arndale, and he didn't get harassed, so why isn't it okay for me to do the same thing? And it's shocking that the first thing that comes out of their mouths isn't that was a horrific experience, it was, well, why, why were you doing that? Again, it's that sense of victim blaming, it's a sense that you were doing something wrong. We've had more and more incidents recently where we felt that the girls haven't been able to deal with things that have happened to them. Um, that boys have expected them to do things that they haven't wanted to do. They put up with a lot of sort of sexist language um, from the boys and we've decided that we have to address it much earlier on in the school. I felt like a lot of, a lot of the students were quite, had quite a bad reaction to me becoming a feminist and they always tell you to sort of turn to your teachers because they'll help you and things, but um, I felt really unsupported and one of my teachers told me that um, I was just wasting my time and that I should give up, um, which was really disheartening to hear, especially from somebody who I had a lot of respect for. What would you say to that teacher who told you that feminism is a waste of time? Um, I would say to my teacher <laughs> um, that human rights are never a waste of time. People come from so many different backgrounds, um, so many different families, so many different kind of frames of reference and all we want to do is ask a question that might make someone think about something differently or even think about something that they never thought about before. If we can be working with primary schools and really instilling a sense of um, absolute open doors, you can achieve anything. You can really go and have a go at whatever it is you think might be your thing and not have to worry about um, the barriers that might be in your way. Then you're creating a kind of generation of really confident children. They can move into secondary school and that's when you can start really picking apart the issues that do exist in the world, which they still absolutely do, and looking at how you make change. I didn't really have a clue what feminism was. I didn't really think I supported it or anything like that. But when I met other girls who said, yeah, I have an opinion on this thing to do with sexism, I call myself a feminist, it made me stop and think and kind of consider, well, what do I think about that? Am I a feminist? And what do I want to do with calling myself a feminist? So that's why feminism is really important in school, because that's the point where you're actually kind of forming who you are and what you think of the world around you. The younger we can start this, the sooner we can try and create a really, really open dialogue around the issue and the further it will spread. I guess we want to say, you know, you can be whoever you want to be, you don't have to be a man, um, and, and what does that even mean, and uh, what do you want it to mean? And then, of course, it's really just a matter of years before they're the people that are making the decisions, working, like making complete impact on their world and the world around them and how they view those issues. The Campaign for Consent was started over the summer holiday um, with two friends of mine. The sex ed curriculum had really not prepared us for relationships and uh, we all felt a little bit let down by it. <laughs> we just decided over the summer holidays to set up a, um, a campaign. Um, we set up a website where students, teachers and parents could sort of share stories of bad experiences with sex education. We collected people's stories and um, we spoke to Stella Creasy, MP, and we wrote a letter to the Department for Education asking them to update the curriculum um, to include sexual consent, because um, we felt it was really important. I you know, started to collaborate with other girls who were also passionate about this and to think, well, what can we do? Can we set up a feminist society? To get everyone talking about it, to create a feminist dialogue just within the school environment. 
there was such a huge turnout on the first day, on the first session. It was, it was incredible. It was a really good, powerful feeling that actually everybody does want to know. Um, and I know what a lot of girls felt was that actually they just didn't really understand what feminism was about. Yeah, I felt like feminist society was something which made me at least, and I think a lot of other people, realise that all of, lots and lots of things that happened to us in everyday life that we did just accept were all sort of not okay. And that was the first time that I actually realised that it wasn't okay and that it shouldn't just be normal. I remember a girl messaging me afterwards, thanking me for setting up the Feminist Society because actually she just didn't understand what feminism was about until I had introduced it to them. And actually I think the fact that they don't understand just shows how little feminism is talked about in schools, how little there is any feminist education. We sent out questionnaires to like other year groups in the school and most people in the, in like the year groups, they didn't know what gender equality or inequality is. They chose the topic and researched it and decided that it was worth pursuing that actually there was an issue of gender inequality in the community, in the school, and that they could actually do something about it. We want everyone to know about it so everyone can be treated fairly. Like for example, in the workplace, our, um, a lady gets paid less and a man gets paid more. So we want that to be as equal as possible. I think that this is an issue not just in our school and I think we're very honest as a school about what happens here and the fact that we're trying to deal with it. And I think this is an issue that's, you know, countrywide. And I think it's something that should be taken up in schools you know, nationwide and should be recognised. And I think we have to realise as a teaching profession that the battle isn't won and there's a lot of work to be done out there. Um, and everybody needs to address it. Feminism to me represents equality for all. It represents women being in a world where they don't feel afraid, where they don't feel objectified, where there's no violence committed against them because of the cultural and institutional pressures that exist that, that compound us to, to be oppressed and standing up against that. That's what feminism means to me. There's no boundaries to who can be a feminist or not. Guys can be feminists. I'm a feminist, hopefully she's a feminist, he's a feminist. Feminism quite simply just means equal rights and opportunities for all of the sexes. Because who doesn't believe in equality between men and women? Yeah. If you don't, then effectively you are saying that you believe women are inferior, or men. Basically, it's just, it's just a human rights issue. It's about basic human rights, because women's rights are human rights, and that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs>